Today we're taking a look at the SkyZone Sky 04X version 2 goggle. Now, this is a long-term review. I've had this goggle for approximately six months now. Now, this video is gonna be a bit lengthy and I've made it so that you don't need to watch it to get most of the information I'm going to provide in it. Feel free to throw it on, put it on the background and just listen. So the SkyZone Sky L4X version 2 are OLED screen analog goggles. They feature a 60 frames per second DVR, 1280 by 960 resolution, a 46 degree field of view. We have optic adjustments for those with glasses between negative six to positive six, IPD sliders ranging from 58 to 71 millimeters, so they should fit most facial structures. They also take an HDMI input, so they're compatible with the Shark by HD system or other HDMI devices. And last but not least, they come with a receiver known as the Rapid Mix or Steady, Steady View receiver. So there's a lot to appreciate with these goggles. There's a lot to go over. Let's jump into the full review. So the first thing I want to talk about is the 60 frames per second DVR and it was one of the features that I was really excited about when purchasing these. With 60 frames per second you get some smooth looking video of your flights. SkyZone's DVR also does an excellent job of keeping the frames. There's no drops in the recording. That makes it easy to sync up 60 frames per second video from my phone or action camera with the SkyZone DVR to do live flight impressions. And I feel like I'm putting up excellent quality video now when I do a review of an FPV drone as well. Between the DVR quality and the frame rate, I think the SkyZones are definitely a winner and did, do not disappoint in that area. SkyZone has included some nice vision features to make these work for as many users as possible and achieve a comfortable viewing distance. So they have focus adjustment, IPD sliders, and different faceplate options to accomplish that. Now I wear glasses and anybody who does knows the struggle of buying FPV goggles. I'm normally screwed into having to buy diopter inserts with varying levels of correction. With the Sky Zones, the range is negative six to positive six and they can be tuned using the dials with each eye. Not having to play with uh, diopter options or have to spend money on that to get perfect vision is great. It was great. Now another thing that SkyZone has done to help the fit and view is introduce two different kinds of face plates, a wide and a narrow one. Now the narrow face plate will bring the optics a little closer to your eyes. Now the IPD sliders run between 58 to 71 millimeters, which should fit most pupil distances. So these two options combined help with getting a working fit and adjustment. However, I must caution as with all FPV goggles, there is unfortunately no guarantee that they will work perfectly with your face. SkyZone, I think, has done at least a lot to give users every possible option to make them work. With the rising popularity of the SharkBite system, also known as HD0, you might wonder, do these work with the SkyZones? And the answer is, yes they do. The SkyZones are equipped with an HDMI input jack, meaning they can take HDMI out from pretty much any device. Now the only issues are the fit and form. So the first issue is that the HDMI jack is in a bit of a different place than it is on the Fat Sharks, and so the included cable is a little fiddly. What I've done is just make a loop of the cable, and then it makes it a lot easier to fit and plug in. So unfortunately, the included fan plate replacement that is intended to hold the SharkBite receiver onto the goggle doesn't fit. You will need to 3D print a custom holder to address that. And I have a link to that down in the video description below. Uh, but otherwise, yes, the, the important thing is that, yes, the SharkBite HD system does work with the Sky Zones, and it looks fantastic in the OLED screens that this thing has. 
The Skyover X goggles can be powered from a 2S to 6S LiPo battery, meaning most FPV drone batteries that you have lying around are going to work just fine in these and are safe to plug in. You won't have to worry about accidentally grabbing a battery from your bag, plugging it in, and frying it. Unlike, say, the Fatshark HD02, which takes a max input of 3S. The strap does have a place to hold a standard on-head goggle battery, but the kit also includes this XT60 barrel connector. And if you're like me and prefer to keep the battery in your pocket, that's what this is good for. Uh, they also support five volt input over USB. There's a little USB jack on the bottom, USB-C, and that can be used to power as well if you have a power bank or something like that. All right, so with my phone placed up against one of the optics in the SkyZone goggles, I'm gonna take you inside and kind of show you around the interface. So I'm gonna start by pressing the scroll wheel button on the right side of the goggle, which brings access to a quick menu on top, showing what mode you're in, what channel you're on, it's eight, and the band that you're on, which is race band. And using the scroll wheel, you can easily flip through the channels and the bands. Another press will take you to switch between the diversity mode or the mixing mode. And this is pretty easy to use, pretty easy to access. This is, a, this is gonna be your most commonly pressed button. Uh, I would have preferred to have a dedicated button for changing channel and band, but this is pretty easy to use. And here are all the settings we get. There are head tracking options. I'm gonna just briefly kind of go over them here. These are the image settings. We can change brightness, we can change sharpness, we can do all sorts of things to adjust here. This is the DVR stuff. We have DVR options, we can format the card. Let's go to the display. We've got all sorts of stuff here. The OSD timeout, we can raise that. Actually, I prefer to raise that a little bit right now. Uh, we could change our aspect ratio. All these different options are here and I'm just kind of showing you around them. Uh, and that's pretty much it for the settings using the button on the right side of the goggles. So now I'm going to press the button on the left side of the goggles and that just starts and stops your DVR. There's no long press, there's no craziness, it's just, that's it. Starts and stops your DVR recording. Really simple. Now I'm going to press the left scroll wheel and that opens up the mode menu. We can change to a variety of modes here and we can also change to HDMI input. If you were going to do shark bite system, that's what you would do. You would select HDMI input. Let's go over the playback because that's what you can get from this menu as well. If we scroll all the way down under HDMI input, this is your DVR playback and it's pretty simple. Scroll wheel on the right starts the video playback and you can scroll through it using the wheel, which is really, really nice. You can pretty much use the wheels to scroll through this. I, I really, really like that feature and if you just want to browse and see things it's also there as well in playback mode you use the right scroll wheel to just gently click one little movement through each a file and you can also do a fast movement to skip through more files and that's basically how you select the clip that you want to play my opinion of the interface with the sky zones is that i like it that there's really not a whole lot of holding down buttons to get to this menu or that menu or other thing. Like everything's actually pretty easy to get to in this interface. With my fat charts, one of the things I struggled with was just like finding the, uh, how long to hold down one of the little joystick buttons. I really like what SkyZone has done, putting the two scroll wheels on there and two buttons up top. It keeps it simple and it makes it easier to cycle through things. And also this is a very fully featured goggle. You've got a lot of different options here to appreciate. And so yeah, that's a look on the inside of these. Another exciting thing about the Sky Zones is that they actually come with a receiver included. There's a full blown signal mixing capable analog receiver known as the Rapid Mix or the Steady View. Now I'm gonna try to be as fair as possible here with this receiver. Some people love it, some people hate it, and you're gonna learn why. Now on my Rapid Mix receiver, I'm running SkyZone's latest 2.3 beta firmware released in mid 2021 at the time of this video. Now while I don't have the Immersion RC Rapid Fire module to compare it to, 
Overall, I've been very happy with the Rapid Mix receiver. This could be because I primarily fly pre-built micro drones with it, but I've also spectated my friends' quads and custom builds, and the mixer mode has worked great on them too. Now recently, I did a review of the Reckon 3 drone, and I went almost a mile out on 350 milliwatts on that model, and the reception was excellent. Now, whenever I fly, I tend to use premium antennas that are closely matched with what I'm flying. My cho antenna choices right now are the Ethics Mad Mushroom V2. It's an excellent, um, it's an excellent omnidirectional antenna. And for the patch, I'm running the Menace RC Linear Viper patch. Now, a linear patch antenna is specially made and tuned for getting the maximum performance out of models with dipole antennas like the micros, and I would highly recommend it just in general. Now, so far, I've had excellent compatibility with a wide variety of models that I have tried thus far, but I did have a horrible experience with a quad that I recently reviewed known as the iFlight Baby Nazgul 73mm. And that experience showcases what can happen and does happen to some in the mixing mode with this receiver. Now the color was completely out of whack and there was no way to fly it with the mixer processing the colors so incorrectly, making things way too dark to even see what you're doing. And this is an example of basically the worst case scenario of what can happen if the Skyzone receiver is not mixing right. Now I must stress for me that this has been the exception rather than the norm. I've got a pile of drones here that it's worked just fine with along with more and this is the only one that's given me an issue. You can always switch to diversity mode and that will work just fine. But of course it does defeat the purpose of having a mixing receiver. It shows that although video transmitter, camera, and model compatibility has been improved, there's still more work to be done and at least Skyzone is still trying. The Rapid Mix module and Skyzone goggles also have a cool feature to run in what's called quad diversity mode. This other side of the Skyzones is actually a full module bay. In here, a second Rapid Mix module can be plugged in and both of them can work together. Now, I've not tried this, but at some point I may pick up another one of these Rapid Mix modules and do some tests in the future, but the option is there. In the best case scenario, you get the Sky Zones, you update all the firmware, and honestly, I think you should be good to go with most setups. In the worst case, you can replace the Rapid Mix receiver with the undisputably best in class Immersion RC Rapid Fire because you can remove the module and just install one of your own. Now, although Rapid Fire will fit in the Skyzone goggles, you will need to 3D print a cover for them because the stock cover will not work. Also, if you're a fan of the Team Black Sheep Fusion module by chance, I must note it is not compatible with these. Only the Rapid Fire is. So even though the receiver is basically in development, is it worth it? Are these goggles worth it? You know, these are $500 goggles, receiver included and advertised as such. They should have been working the best of the best as possible from day one of release. And many of the first adopters of Rapid Mix definitely suffered with a lot of updates, while I didn't have to. And now I think that that's a good segue into the next part of the video. What are the pros and cons of choosing Sky Zones over the Fat Sharks? The question that most people are asking themselves, should you buy the Sky Zone Sky O4X V2 or should you just go for the Fat Shark HD O2s? Let's first consider the price and value for the hardware. Fat Shark HD O2s cost around $499 US. These cost $529 US. There's really nothing feature-wise that the Fat Shark HD O2 offer over the Sky Zones. The DVR in the Fat Sharks by comparison can only do 30 frames per second and it's a lower quality looking DVR. If you create or upload videos like I do, you will really appreciate the DVR on this unit. With Sky Zones, you also get a full-blown mix and diversity receiver. Now you can actually start flying out of the box with the Sky Zones. You can't do that with the Fat Sharks. 
With Fat Shark HDO2, I would have had to spend at least another $100 to $150 on a comparable receiver. Now, the much higher quality DVR is also priced into these. So, in a way, the Skyzone receiver is almost like a bonus compared to the competition, which has no receiver at all included for basically the same price. Overall, if we're just looking at price, hardware capabilities, included receiver, and interface, I really feel that the Sky Zones are a clear winner in value over the Fatshark HDO2s. But what about customer service and support for these? Fatshark has undeniably some of the best support. So if you need service on the Sky Zones past the return period, what are your options? I inquired with a SkyZone representative before making this video about current repair options within the United States, since that's where I'm based. He said that there is no US repair address right now, but that normally there would be. Currently, they're trying to hire a new warranty and repair person because the old one apparently just wasn't doing the repairs. Ouch. Well, at least they're honest about it. Skyzone, however, did say that they provide replacement parts to service the goggles yourself. Parts are also stocked stateside or can be shipped from China, and for the most part, goggles like this are very modular. Now, despite that, if there is no local support available in your location and you can't fix them yourself, the reality is they might have to be sent back to China. All right, guys, let me know if you have any questions. Leave me a message down in the comments below. I'd be happy to answer any questions at all or try to help you guys with issues you might be having with your sky zones. These are my new daily driver goggles and will hopefully continue to be so for a long time. If you like the video, please give me a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. I do a lot on this channel, reviews, drones, all sorts of stuff, tech. So give me a subscribe, hit the bell, don't forget to do that, all the good YouTube stuff. And with that being said, I'm going to go do some flying. You guys take care, and I'll see you in the next vid.